Welcome and good day, everyone. We, of course, are glad you guys could join us here for another Talk It Over. Um, as you can see, our setup is a little bit different. We have two guests with me today. I have Dave and John. Uh, should be a good discussion today. This, of course, is actually my life group. So this should be a lot of fun. Here we are. <laughs> uh, continuing, of course, yeah, continuing in our series, uh, Find Your People, Love Your Neighbor, um, Week 2. Uh, excellent message. Another guest speaker. Uh, she did a really great job this week. Um, before we get into that, um, a little dive into how your week's been going. Anything new and exciting or fairly steady? Nothing new. It's been pretty regular. We had, uh, actually, that's not true. We had a guest come and stay yes. with us. Mm -hmm. uh, um, a family member came and stayed with us for a few days. It was and great. Got together with family. One with four legs came. A four-legged friend We did. Came. We did. We had a dog in the house. Yeah. So that was an adventure because yeah, yep. we are a non-dog household, but we made an exception for um, our family member to come and bring her dog along. So yeah. and it worked out really well. It, yeah. was, it was good. We had a great visit. And so it was a great week. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. How about for you, John? That, that was my that was, update. Oh, that was your update as well. All right. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Same boat. That's all right. That keeps it keeps it simple. Yeah. Um, for, for me, again, we're gearing up for Make-A-Wish. Uh, That's right. You know, leaving tomorrow. So Soon. Yeah, it's going to be uh, what very, what time? 6.30 in the morning. It's going to be early. So it's going to be a very uh, Come up on 12 hours. late night, early morning. It's going to be yeah. crazy. So yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be busy. Um, it's been a busy week getting that all together. Um, just getting it, you know, all put together, all the final pieces. Still got to do a few final pieces of packing, yeah. uh, which we can't really do before too early. So I need to use that toothbrush. Yeah, I need to use I that. I can't pack that. <laughs> I need that for today. Yeah. So, yeah, just real excited about that. Little guy's super excited. He's uh, very looking forward to it. And, uh, yeah, it should be a fun week. It'll be a busy week. But, uh, yeah, it should be a good time to make some memories. So. Oh, it's going to be crazy busy. Crazy busy. <laughs> it is. It is. It's going to be a blur. It's going to come and go. It's going to go faster than it came. I've been on vacations like that where you have a quiet day during the week. And when you were planning it, you're like, well, maybe we'll do something. And then you get that quiet week while you're there. And you're like. Oh, yeah, the quiet day. It's out. just, it's just so nice to yeah. relax for a little bit. I can relax on vacation. This is go, go, go all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's fun. Yeah. You yeah. Have, have it should fun. be, it should be a lot of fun. Um, all right. So dive into some of these questions. Uh, this week's message title is you're not alone in feeling alone. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, great message and, uh, yeah, excellent. Um, our scripture today is found in John 13 verses 34 to 35. Love one another. In the same way I love, loved you, you love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples, when they see the love you have for each other. Um, yeah, a great just representation about what it means to show God's love and be loving to one another, uh, because God loves all of us, and we need to show that love, of course, to others. Yeah, and I love that Liz Bohannon, who did the message, Yes. That we heard at the Global Leadership Summit, actually. Yeah. And so it was nice to hear that again because you pick up different things yeah. when you listen again. But she did a great job of talking about kind of all the things that we often use to say, this is how you know I'm following Jesus. Yeah. Like the size of my church, the amount of money I have, the ministry I have, the whatever. And we have this whole list of things. And it's like, no, Jesus said it's just how you love each other. Mm -hmm. like, that's the defining characteristic. And so how do we do that well? And this series has really been about... How do we do that? Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's been excellent. Excellent. Um, okay, so our first question. What do you do when you have an entire evening to yourself? Oh, wow. That's an easy question. Uh, I'm super productive all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, always getting stuff done, things around the house. No, I uh, TV shows, YouTube, video games. Uh Every so often I am somewhat productive and I'll do, I do development for a living. So I'll play around with programming. Maybe that's on like a really good day, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, just like it's a lot of technology, solitary stuff though, right? It is solitary. I think I do the same. I think often when I have a day off, I do solitary stuff. It's harder to coordinate everyone to do stuff together. And so I don't make the effort that I used to. Yeah. I used to do a lot of coordinating, getting people yep. together and I do less of that now. It's more, eh. I'll read, I'll play, I'll watch something. Yeah. You're right. I, yep. That's that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's different when everybody's got uh, busy schedules and, and everybody's doing different things and their downtimes are different from your downtimes. Yeah. And it makes it a lot, a lot harder to get together to do those things all together. Right. 
because we're in the habit of not thinking about each other's schedules. We're yeah. in the habit of, I just manage my schedule and do what I need to do when I want to do it. Yep. And who cares what your schedules are? So that when I do have downtime, you're right, I can't coordinate because I don't really know. Yep. Yeah. Because that's the system we've set up. And she talked about that a lot in the she message. Did, yeah. Like, yeah. you get what you have set your system up to accomplish. And so our system is set up that we don't know when people are available. And so we can't really coordinate. Yep. Yep. Unless the moons align and you do have free time at the same time. Yeah. And then maybe you could do something. Right. Yeah. But yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting. Cause yeah, you know, you get all these ideas of, I know for me, it's like getting those ideas of, okay, I, I, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And you get the whole evening schedule out. I make dinner. I sit down, have dinner and then I watch the show and then that's everything it. else just kind of just, I, I lose, I lose the yeah. capacity or lose the drive to continue enough on the plans that I had to do yeah. and things that would have been like somewhat productive. Um, they just kind of like, Oh, this is just nice. I'm just going to just rest for a minute or I'll close my eyes. And the next thing you know, I've had a nap for 45 minutes and yeah, <laughs> I've just missed out it's, on it's time for bed now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oh, well, it's time, time bed. for bed. Oh, this, this is great. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Let us know guys. What's that for you? What do you guys like to do, uh, on an evening that you have to yourself, something that you would like to do? Is it get together with friends, make it very intentional or do you find yourself doing something? Yeah. Very just by yourself, something that you just personally enjoy. Um, all right, so what part of the message for you guys was really impactful? Something that really kind of stood out that you thought uh, was very interesting? I thought when she talked about the need for community, and if you look at Jesus right before he goes to the cross when he's in the Garden mm -hmm. of Gethsemane um, and he's praying and he's like, I need you guys to be with me. And she reframed that as a, it's not a lecture about how the disciples were so weak they kept falling asleep. Yep. It was actually Jesus saying, this is really hard and I need, I need community. I want community. Mm -hmm. I want people around me. Yep. And that our need for each other is actually a design feature. It's not a flaw. Yep. It's not something that is a problem. It's actually how it's supposed to work. Hmm. And when she talked about that, I thought, wow, uh, she just kind of flipped that whole thing upside down for me yeah. and made me think about that differently. Like God built this in as a strength and a design and it's on purpose and we need it. Yep. It's good. It's not a bad thing. Um, and so that, that really hit me. Yeah. I don't know when good. that happened. That independence is like the honorable thing that like, you shouldn't be a burden to others. Right. That's like, mm. cause that's what it is right now yep. in our society. Yeah. I don't want to bother people. Maybe it's because we feel sometimes in our hearts, we don't want to serve people. So we translate that to, they're not going to want to serve me or I don't want to be a burden. So then I don't want to put people in that position. Or, or it's with rejection. I don't want someone to say like, hey, this is too much, which almost never happens yeah. for most of us, right? Yep. But yeah, that, that, that was really good. I I liked when she talked about you just got to be the first mm. to oh, like, yeah, yeah. start yep. community. Yep. Um, yeah, because it's, it's tempting to think that like, oh, well, community hasn't just happened to me with my friends or with people or so then it's just never going to happen. Yeah. Instead, yeah. it's like take the initiative reach out to people, coordinate times to get together, right? Like it takes work. And if you need to be the leader for that, because like, I don't know what the stats were, but not many people want to do that or are going to do that. Yeah. Um, but you can be the reason that people then have community, right? Like mm -hmm. you help to build something. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I it felt, I felt geared up, ready to. And the amount of effort you have to make seems to change depending on how much you're around each other. That's true. So when yep. you're in university, let's say, or college, yeah, that's and right. you're around people all the time, the effort that's required to coordinate that, somebody still has to initiate it, yeah. but is low. Yeah. And then when you spread out and everyone's got their own jobs in different places, right? it's a much higher demand yep. to coordinate that. Yep. And is it still worth it, I guess, is what it comes down to. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. And you don't notice it all the time that it, all of a sudden it's harder. Yeah. Right? So when you have distance, it's like, I need to be much more intentional. And there's never really a moment where you're like, Oh, I'm going to actually like work hard to do this. It just kind of is like, it just never yeah. happens. Yeah. So it was a good reminder to actually, you know, make it happen. It's worth it. And, uh, see what, see what happens. Right. It's yeah. worth the effort. Yeah. 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 But it is. And we've talked about this before in our life group. Like it's hard. It's hard to make that effort to coordinate people because we've got all this head dialogue that keeps us from doing it. Yep. But like you had mentioned like all these reasons why we shouldn't or why I don't really want to. And, mm -hmm. and then we don't. And we start that slow fade. And I think the more you don't spend time making that effort, it actually becomes harder to restart it again. 
Yeah. Because it's been so long. It's not the habit anymore. Yep. It feels different. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It feels clunky, kind of like, why does this feel weird? It used to be not natural. Well, and for you, you're not that far out of university. Like, yeah. It hasn't been that long yet. It feels like a long time, but yeah. Right? It doesn't yep. take very long, does it? It doesn't. Yeah. Literally a few years, and it's like, wait, like all of this is, it feels new. Um, but yeah, it's really worth keeping those connections and friends, right? And putting in that effort. Yeah. For those of us where it's been a little longer. Yeah. A little bit longer. I can include little, you with little, that. Yeah. A little bit longer. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> then uh, it's a little harder to restart that again, but it's yep. really worth the effort. Yeah. It is. It, I, I agree. It's, it's more difficult to restart it after you've been in it. Like, yeah, that college, university, that atmosphere. Um, or high school. Or high school. Yeah. Even high school. Um, certainly because you're around these people a lot. You spend a lot of time with them throughout the day. And then as you start branching off, some of those out of high school gets smaller as you make new connections in post-secondary. Yeah. And then after post-secondary, it changes again. And yeah. it, it does change and it seems to get harder because the schedules get more busy. There's more demand on yeah. your time, more demand on doing other things. So it's harder. It yeah. gets harder. It certainly gets much harder. Yeah. Um, yeah, I liked how she has gone, I would say, radical, but a more direct approach to the idea of community mm. and creating this commune of bought a lot, put three houses on it. They're very close together. Yeah. The people that live together are doing life together day in and day out. It's yeah. not It's not something you just like, here's a fence and my neighbor's over there. It's these people are in and out of... Share space. Yard, shared Share space, yard space, yeah. everything shared. You're helping with kids. You're helping with, you know, everything around the housing and yep. everything. And it's just a very direct approach. But having to take that initiative to do that, to want to make that a priority. Hmm. Again, it was what you're saying, John. It's, it's you have to take that step. You have to initiate things sometimes. And so seeing that, I'm like, it's a, I, I, I really like that idea of this community of everybody's just helping everybody out day to day yeah but it seems so countercultural, right and so trying to get the head around like how would you make that work how would this you know how would you yes. get that to work in a society that says you should be in your own little bubble that's right right but she unpacked that too that which reminds me that was huge when she's yeah. like okay since man started all the way up until recently the default was community and you live close to each other and you interact yeah. And really, it's been a social experiment in maybe the Western world for not very long, like 100, 150 years to only do it just us in our mm -hmm. bubble. And so you could say that what's countercultural is what we do, living in a bubble. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it really could be. Yeah. Compared to what our culture has been of humanity for thousands of years. And she did a good job of saying, OK, it's like an experiment we've been running and the results are starting to come in and it's not good. People are lonely, they're isolated, they feel unsupported. Like it's really not a positive response yeah. to having our bubble. Well, and now we're learning what does what are the damages of being lonely? Because yeah. now people are lonely and now we're seeing the results of loneliness, yeah. which they were, she was saying like is super dangerous for yeah. people. It is. It yeah, is. It, like mental health, but also physical health. Like, like yeah, it, just it, in it, general. Yeah, Everything yeah. about it is is hard. And yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's interesting that we made that shift um because she was saying in other parts of the world it's like there's like a forced dependence mm -hmm. because it's literally too much to try and do it by yourself yeah yep. um but with i think a lot of the wealth we have in north america we've just leaned on that to think the goal is to isolate instead of you know like that's the dream to do it yourself to, to have my home that's separate and my job that's separate and over yep. here it's interesting you say um, it's kind of forced in other countries. I wonder if because the price of housing is so high in our country, which is a negative, but if there could be a positive that comes out of it because now we do have to kind of depend depend on each other and live a little closer and share a little more yep. because we don't have the wealth to be able to like separate and everyone do their own thing. Yeah. So it may end up actually being part of a solution. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, yeah could, be. could be. Could be. I hadn't really thought of that either. Yeah. That's a good idea. All right. So culture can push us towards convenience, busyness, and independence. While those can be good things, 
what are some ways they could create the loneliness? And we kind of touched on that a little bit, but yeah. But again, that convenience that 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 convenience for me really sticks out. Yeah. And you know the introduction to the smartphone, which really wasn't that long ago. She talked about that. Yeah. It's about what ten years ago or so that was really a pronounced. Little, a little over, yeah. Right. Um, and that convenience of now everything can just come to your door. You don't even have to go out to get things anymore. Food shows up, groceries show up, other packages show up. Like you don't have to leave to go anywhere. You don't have to see or interact with anybody. Yeah. It's at the door, ring the doorbell. There's my stuff. Like, yeah, right. And I think that really For some drives people. Us. That's like the dream. Uh, some it is. That's what they think it is, right? Then that's like, the dream. I'm living the dream. I don't have to even leave my house. I don't even have to leave my house. So sad. But I'm like, man, that is so secluded from everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have no social interaction whatsoever other than maybe social media where, oh, look, I'm liking and we're friends online, but... It's all fake. It, it's not real, right? Yeah. right? Some of these people you'll never meet, like yeah. ever meet that you're friends with, right? And if you have some kind of emergency, they're not showing up to help. They're, no, they're not going to be there. And that's the other part of it. Like, who do you call if you're in trouble? Like, we're going to the hospital. Can you watch my kids? who do you who do you who do you have for that if, yeah if everything just comes to you right like yeah. who, who you there's not an uber for that no not, not yet <laughs> <laughs> an uber friend is yeah, that what uber friend is going to become a thing uber sit oh man yeah uber sit. anyway but yeah for me that's one that really stands out that can really drive that loneliness because you just you don't it, it eliminates all social contact yeah because you, you literally don't have to go anywhere even from strangers, like to not have to go out and shop or to do anything. And like, for me, I work remote. It's like, even just like, it's literally like my life has become a house. Like yeah. everything I need is within a house. Yeah. So it's like, I have to make conscious effort to get out and walk, be outside, move, like all these things that like you would naturally do from point A to point B become actually like a conscious effort. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. That's a good point though. Mm -hmm. That things we didn't have to make an effort now we do yeah yep. um but how do you make that mental switch that i should make that effort yeah well you have to recognize it's important and i don't think because naturally we've been doing it so we've been reaping from that now when you realize not having it is like detrimental then we have to make like a conscious effort you have to use that to remember okay i need to get out and walk i need to do this right yeah because in our society, what has become natural is um, everybody chases jobs and you move. Nobody yeah. stays close to each other. That scene is strange. Well, there's that, that movie, um, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And he buys them the next door house yeah. for them to live in. Yeah. And it's like a joke. Like, that's so weird that you would do that. Because what do we normally do? We normally spread, I'll go to another city, I'll go to another province or another state. Yeah. Like I'm going everywhere. Yep. And I break that community. Yeah. And so now I have to make a different effort to actually even get to know people that I could do life with that live close to me. Yeah. And it doesn't always work out that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. It's just normal. And like we have to, now we're second guessing everything, right? Yeah. Like why do we do it that why way? Do, yeah. Yeah. I but, think because we're seeing the results. Yeah. It start, yeah, we're starting to see it now. Yeah, you, you experience some of the loneliness. You see the how hard it is to make the effort to yeah. make those things happen. Like, like why is it, why has it become like that? Yeah. And how do I, how do I change that? When it also makes me wonder, like, what led to us thinking that that was the goal? Yeah. Like, like, what mental loops did we have to jump through to think that isolating, pursuing the job, ignoring the community just creating your own life isolated, what happened oh. in our mind to make that happen to be the goal. So I think a lot of it is around like loving people is hard and like, like to have community, to be intentional to, like she was saying, like when they're having an argument, she does not want to share that with her friends. That you are want people door. to know. No, you, you want people to think that you're fine. Yeah. So when they actually took that step to actually like go there at their lowest point to get external help. Yep. It's embarrassing. It's awkward. It's right for sometimes everyone included, but she's saying like in the long term, like a huge difference, like it helps tremendously. Yeah. But if we're not willing to feel that uncomfortable, like be uncomfortable and actually like work hard to love people, like Jesus was saying, like he boiled it right down, just love each other, yep. which is simple, but not easy. Like 
then, you know, when we're trying to avoid that, the exact opposite is then to isolate, to be independent, to... To serve myself. Literally the exact opposite of what Jesus said to, to do, yeah. which is kind of sad that that's kind of where we've all been heading. But I think the church has helped to kind of add some resistance to that where, like, no, we need to be in community. I was thinking about that as we were gathering for church today, that... Right. Society said gathering as a body of believers for worship is really not a priority. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And I think as Christians, we kind of went, oh, OK, I'll believe what you said. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to deprioritize yeah. gathering for worship. It's about community. It's about us actually turning our hearts to God in community yeah. and say, yeah, I guess it's really not that important. And so we actually follow the world rather than what God says. Yeah. And he's doing it because that's what we need is what we're supposed to do. Yeah. I think we also do the move away, pursue the job because it's about, I get more property, more space, more stuff. Yes. And more money. You're right. Yeah. And it, right. I think it's those two things that are like, I will abandon family and connections and community and I will move away for the sake of, I like my property where I get to live and I want more money. Yeah. Like community, I don't even know if it comes up as like one of the family probably i think family would a little bit but for actual like like community of friends or that it's just expected that you just kind of go off and do your own thing at some point that's right you leave right. them behind but i remember being a kid dreaming like the dream is i would have like a neighborhood block and all my friends would be there and i'm like that would be the coolest thing right. growing up that would be like the coolest thing for me right like how cool would it be if you know my high school friends or, or university friends or people from church that we we kind of have that already with church but with people you just you just have this like physical space together and it's not like you have to always live next to a stranger right but so when did we abandon that and decide that living close to people not a priority i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i i think it must have been before me but because yeah. I, I i don't that's kind of been just you always have your own space like i don't know maybe my parents generation baby boomers yes because i think up till then there's stories of family all living in proximity. They all, were in Toronto. Yep. They all live kind of very close. Close. Yep. Yeah. And then my parents uprooted and moved like an hour away yep. to another city. And that and then everybody began to do that. Started to move around. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it might have been out of necessity, but then that might have gotten lost. Because sometimes a move does have to happen just because, I don't know, life, maybe. Maybe there maybe there's one good reason that you did have to move and it yep. really sucks and they didn't yep. want to have to leave community. But then if kids don't get that, that's why. And then, do you know what I mean? Like the that's movies, the new expectation. Yeah, the expectation is you just, you create your own life somewhere else. That's the goal. Yeah. Which is what Hollywood kind of projects. And, and something's wrong if you don't. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. You, you haven't matured if you're yeah. still connected with family and friends yeah. in the same community. Yeah. yeah. So, which is sad. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. It seems to be a problem. Yeah. Seems to be the problem. Yeah. All right. Well. Time flies. We are, <laughs> we, are, we are at the end of our time here okay. with you guys today. Um, of course, I want to thank you guys for joining me today on Talk It Over. Thanks I think we've had a great conversation. This is, it was quite good. Yep. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. And I want to thank you guys for joining us uh, each and every week. Of course, we love to have you here as we do our Talk It Over. Of course, I want to thank the tech team kind of behind us, more in front of us today, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, and uh, for, again, making this all possible. Um, that you guys can be with us each and every week as we go through the talk of questions. So we, of course, want to remember, whoever finds God, finds life.